Sam Darnold is going to be QB2 for the San Francisco 49ers. You're Arnold in as the number two quarterback, which means Trey Lance was not at practice today. There is a real chance here that he gets traded. I think we could all agree by this, and it's no exaggeration at all whatsoever, that this was the San Francisco 49ers' absolute worst nightmare. There could not have been a worse scenario than what we're talking about here today. So before we get to the content, this should be my final video in Costa Rica. Then I'm going to hop onto a plane back to Los Angeles and start start giving away so many Madden 24 codes on my Instagram story, on my Snapchat story, and onto my Twitter account. The links to all that's in the description down below with the giveaway tweet on Twitter. And now that we get all that out of the way, break. Ladies and gentlemen, the NFL is finally back. That's impossible. But I'm gonna admit, the preseason is boring as shit. I mean, when the second stringers and third stringers come out, your boy does tend to fall asleep a little bit. But I found a way to make the preseason all the more interesting. Because ladies and gentlemen, we are back! Posting prize picks on the days that there are significant preseason games, starting from the Hall of Fame game all the way to the Super Bowl, your boy is going to be making picks on his Instagram story. The picks are free, all you have to do is follow me on Instagram to get them. And if you haven't signed up for prize picks, right now when you use my promo code microphone, you'll double your deposit up to 100 dollars and thank you prize picks for the sponsorship mike check one two one two what's going on everybody the san francisco 49ers were really frustrated by their quarterback situation and here's the thing it wasn't necessarily the worst quarterback situation but if there's one thing that they observed from their super bowl run where they got defeated by patrick mahomes and the kansas city chiefs it's that whenever it came down to it jimmy garoppolo wasn't able to make those legendary plays that would win in the San Francisco 49ers games. And that's nothing against Jimmy G. He's just a really good game manager. He'll make sure not to screw up the game, but he won't win you any games. Hell, you put Jimmy Garoppolo on the 2018 Saxonville Jaguars, and they may have won a Super Bowl. Maybe. Here's something I've learned about the San Francisco 49ers front office. They have moments of brilliance, like selecting Fred Warner in the fifth round of the NFL draft. Trading for Christian McCaffrey was genius as well. I mean, obviously selecting Brock Purdy worked out for them really well as well. And this is just all off the top of my head, man. And then they have moments where they completely make the most boneheaded move you could ever think of. I think the best example of this is the 2017 NFL Draft. They finesse the Chicago Bears to move up one spot with them and get a bunch of additional third round picks so the Bears can move up one spot to select Mitchell Trubisky. And then they immediately select Solomon Thomas, which clearly didn't work out for them. And I feel like that's the best way we could describe the San Francisco 49ers front office. They get themselves in a situation where they have a boatload of first round picks and then they decide we're gonna burn a bunch of first round picks and move up to the number three pick in the 2021 NFL draft. They gave up two first round picks to swap from number 12 to number three with the Miami Dolphins. Do you want to know what those three picks became by the way? Miami Dolphins were able to somehow turn those three picks into Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, and Bradley Chubb but that's a different conversation for a different day. And the thing that bothers me about this decision is the 2021 one NFL draft was known for the amount of depth they had at the quarterback position. I mean, you have Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, all who would go in the first round, by the way. And I personally thought that it should have been Trevor Lawrence than Justin Fields, but there was some narrative around Ohio State QBs, and that's not what ended up happening. But I think my biggest issue with this is, is one, the moment they moved up to the number three overall pick, there's this drama over who the 49ers are going to select. You know, we, we have people at all the spots. You know, a lot of people we trust and people meet with here over the next month I normally don't like to go to them a bunch um, unless I feel I need I have to unless I have to for some reason but um, I also have been kind of grown up in the idea that you, you don't like to go everywhere and show people things and when you're sitting at 12 and stuff I don't want to go to a bunch of quarterback pro days and things like that and I think that's what made this so funny because typically you move into the top three thinking no we got to make sure we get this guy but the 49ers moved into the top three to say hey we just want to make sure we get a quarterback the best part of all is Kyle Shanahan really wanted Mac Jones who would have fell to them anyway if they just kept their pick or hell maybe you don't take a quarterback and you select Micah Parsons which became the 12th overall 
overall pick. So they decided to move into the top three and they ended up selecting Trey Lance, the biggest project quarterback in the entire NFL draft. And I always used to make a joke about the 49ers saying that they thought that Trey Lance kind of resembled Patrick Mahomes with his hairstyle and his headband. So they decided to treat Trey Lance like he was Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes was drafted, sat behind Alex Smith for one year, and then took over as the Kansas City Chiefs QB, and then won MVP in his first full season under center. So we're gonna do that with Trey Lance. You're gonna sit behind Jimmy Garoppolo for a full year, and then we're gonna hand off the reins to you, Trey Lance, and you're gonna be our full-time starter. The weird part about this was that Jimmy Garoppolo was actually retained. He decided to take a pay cut, got paid as a backup, and Trey Lance was finally handed the reins in year two. It was pretty awkward, I have to admit, but I will also say that Trey Lance never really got an opportunity to show us what he was made out of. Bear in mind, this is a developmental QB. Trey Lance is pretty much Blake Bortles 2.0. You need to make sure that he gets his skill set right and he's really ready to play quarterback. But the thing is, when he went out there in the small sample size that we saw in 2022, Kyle Shanahan was terrified of having this guy drop back. His first game against the Chicago Bears was a disaster and his second game resulted in him getting injured. And the craziest part of all is when Jimmy Garoppolo came back, his teammates started cheering. It was almost as if they were celebrating Trey Lance going down. But I don't want to paint some sort of narrative. We know how the 49ers season would go. It was a very typical 49ers season. They look really freaking good when their quarterback is healthy. And then somehow every possible competent QB that they had under center ends up getting injured. And it's crazy how often this happens, by the way. Whether it's Jimmy Garoppolo in years past, Trey Lance last year, Brock Purdy at the end of the season. So the 49ers going into this offseason were in a very unique situation. It's been two seasons since you selected Trey Lance, and obviously Brock Purdy is now your quarterback. I mean, how could you not have Brock Purdy as your quarterback? He hasn't lost a single game yet. It got really strange throughout the offseason. One was the 49ers looked at potentially trading for Lamar Jackson when Lamar Jackson was very disgruntled about his situation with the Baltimore Ravens. Everything, and we seem to be linked to each and everything. Um, I can tell you, I, th I think it's a how convicted we are on Brock, on this current group of guys that, you know why you're not doing your job if you don't look into things. Um, a lot of those things, I think you're limited by the way our roster's set up, you know? And uh, the other thing is, you're, you know, what's your motivation? And while those those players, there's there's more than, that, than just Lamar. There's tremendous players, um, MVP type players. Um, we really like our guys and, um, we like where we're at. We like our complete roster and how they fit um, for multiple reasons. And we're excited about that group. So I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Now, if you thought that was strange, you should see how this entire offseason went down. I mean, the 49ers also signed Sam Darnold to be their quarterback number two. Typically, teams only have two QBs going into the season, but in the case of the San Francisco 49ers, you have a former number three overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, who is still on a rookie scale contract, competing with the number three overall pick in the 2018 NFL Draft. And in the case of Sam Darnold, I'll go out to bat for him. Kyle Shanahan's the best best head coach he's ever had. This is a great opportunity for him. If he can't make it work here, then I think he's done as a QB in the NFL. His first time playing QB was with the New York Jets under Adam Gase. That was a disaster. And then he gets traded to the Panthers and Matt Rule starts coaching him and that was a disaster. So I actually have a lot of optimism in Sam Darnold. And so far throughout preseason, it looks like Sam Darnold has the makings to be a great QB in this system. Whereas Trey Lance is going viral for throwing doink interception touchdowns. So it's been very, very rough for Trey Lance so far. I mean, and it's also been doubly rough for the San Francisco 49ers. There's so many different directions you could have gone in the 2021 NFL draft. There was no reason to have traded up to the number three pick to begin with. They traded up to number three and they selected the wrong QB. I mean, you should have selected Justin Fields, obviously. <laughs> But what was even more strange throughout the offseason was on top of the 49ers pursuing Lamar Jackson, which John Lynch was pretty freaking transparent about them doing. He didn't even take some time to say that it didn't happen. He straight up admitted to it. There was this cute little story about Trey Lance meeting up with Patrick Mahomes and Patrick Mahomes as QB coach to redo his mechanics. There was also Christian McCaffrey praising Sam Darnold throughout the offseason, but they used to be teammates on the Panthers. And throughout the offseason, we were getting some puff pieces on Trey Lance, 
Why? Why could this be? One second we're hearing him in trade rumors with the Minnesota Vikings. Next second we're hearing how he is ready to compete with the San Francisco 49ers to be their starting quarterback. It got even more strange. Eventually the 49ers had to do this thing where they showed the depth chart and QB1 was Brock Purdy. QB2 was either Sam Darnold or Trey Lance. And it seems like the 49ers had to officially be transparent about what their future is going to look like. So according to Tom Pelissaro, the San Francisco 49ers are naming Sam Darnold their number two QB, and the team is exploring options with Trey Lance. Sources tell me in rap sheet, Darnold will back up Brock Purdy, while the future of Lance, the number three overall pick in 2021, is unclear. This was the 49ers' worst nightmare, because they clearly don't have any faith in Trey Lance at all whatsoever. Even less faith that they had in their QB than the Jets had with Zach Wilson. You need to understand, Trey Lance could be a 49er until 2026 if the 49ers wanted that. But what's clear is they don't want that. I mean, if you look at the case of the New York Jets, they gave Zach Wilson two years to prove himself. It didn't work out. They brought in Aaron Rodgers while keeping Zach Wilson as quarterback number two. Aaron Rodgers even said that he wants to play a few more years and then handed back off to Zach Wilson. I'd like to be able to play a few good years here and then hand it right back off to Zach and right. let him go for the next 15 and it'd be a really special, uh, you know, 18 to 20 year run of uh, <laughs> great quarterback play. So it seems like the Jets actually have faith in Zach Wilson and that's despite Zach Wilson having media meltdowns last year. Do you feel like you let the defense down at all? No. But in the case of the 49ers, they clearly don't have any faith in Trey Lance at all whatsoever. And that's despite having such a tiny sample size of what Trey Lance's abilities are. So I think my biggest issue in this case is, why did the 49ers give up multiple first round picks to trade up for a project slash developmental QB and then didn't even give him an opportunity to develop and are continuing to ruin his confidence? I mean, you knew what you were getting into. Trey Lance is the same quarterback he is now as he was in the pre-draft process. He's a quarterback with tremendous physical tools, very, very raw and horrific accuracy. Maybe they felt like after sitting behind Jimmy G for a season, he should have developed more as a passer. Maybe they looked at him and said, hey, why aren't you Patrick Mahomes yet? And decided to move on from him. I don't really know, but things are clearly really bad here because according to Ian Rappaport, because Ian Rappaport quote tweeted this Cam Inman tweet that said, Trey Lance is not on the 49ers field as they begin final practice before Friday preseason finale. Quote tweeting this saying, no Trey Lance on what has to be a difficult day, maybe some time to regroup. It seems like the future of Trey Lance is set in stone. What do the San Francisco 49ers do with him? There's a bunch of options, but it seems like you're not gonna get much back for Trey Lance. You're not gonna get close to what you paid for him originally. I mean, hell, you might get a fourth or a fifth round pick, but my top three contenders is one being the Minnesota Vikings who might want to trade for him and have him develop behind Kirk Cousins in order to have some sort of leverage over Kirk Cousins in contract negotiations, if that'll even work. But I guess the next option could be the LA Rams. They have an aging QB, but I don't know if the 49ers would trade Trey Lance within their division. I don't think he's going to be that much of a threat either. So those are like the only two teams that come to mind, but we could all agree that this was a huge nightmare for the San Francisco 49ers, and it doesn't appear to be over anytime soon. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about all this. Do you think the 49ers gave up on Trey lands too quick aside from that i'm your boy mike and i'm dropping our mic until our next upload